Okay. Cue the clap. Hi. <laughs> All right, Maria. Wow, this is a really big stage, and I haven't been home. I haven't been outside of my house for the past two years, so yeah, this is going to be really confusing. So <laughs> I am Maria Paula Fernandez. I'm co-founder at JPEG. It's a curation protocol. It's uh, spelled JPG, but it's JPEG, as you know, you all know. And I'm going to be th talking a little bit about long-term thinking initiatives uh, for NFTs, uh, especially in the light of you know having around 10k pfp projects per day which is something crazy maybe yeah maybe i don't have the figure right but yeah you know what i mean so anyways um first uh, who i am a little bit of background i started with nfts in 2018 um sort of by chance uh, i organized one of the first conferences on nfts and right after that time, I actually founded my first grassroots organization in Berlin that's called the Department of Decentralization, where one of the strongest things that we actually do is uh, to work with blockchain and art, uh, NFTs, and of course, uh, art informed uh, the, and that uses blockchain as a medium. So we started researching with the Department of Decentralization about NFTs and other aspects. In 2019, we published the first paper that actually became one of the first and maybe the only one so far, a sort of more academic publications about NFTs. Um, that's 2019, so basically some of you weren't even born, maybe, uh, since everyone's very young here, too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, in, we continued the research, we curated some shows as well. Uh, with NFTs and digital art, and uh, comes the time uh, we were going to publish our second pa paper, and we were trying to update it, but the NFT boom started, so we find it very hard to actually keep up, make it timeless, and we started thinking, okay, this is actually very short-term thinking, everything is happening very fast, so what's the best uh, way to achieve some degree of timelessness, but also to achieve a healthier ecosystem? So basically, fast forward, uh, you know, around two, uh, February this year, uh, we were still facing the COVID crisis. Um, the, uh, the NFT boom had started and, you know, the creatives were sort of in the fence because not everything was selling just as now and we still needed to create more infrastructure. So, yeah, what happens there? Uh, you know, we have probably 120 marketplaces on Ethereum only um, that are selling NFTs. We're onboarding so many artists every single day. We have all of these crazy amount of PFP uh, uh, sort of projects uh, popping up every day and I'm not saying this is wrong actually this is fabulous this is you know proper mainstream and been working in the space since 2018 and I've never thought that this day would come uh, especially so fast uh, you know so you know I have some ideas about how to achieve longevity and sustainability uh, for artist practice first of all because they uh, creatives have to be preserved, but also for the space. You know, uh, one of the key things is actually to create a supporting infrastructure for the marketplaces. Not everything has to be a buy, a buy and sell, and that's a, you know the transactional interaction is not the only one that should be happening. So actually, seeing all of these platforms that allow you to express yourself, like you know. I'm, I'm going to tell you in a, li in a little bit about J uh, JPEG, but also, you know, platforms like Gallery on Cyber that allow you to create your own gallery experiences. Museums like, like Mocha that are building some kind of like community archive and museum. And uh, as well, you know, they're creating their own curated experiences are incredibly important to the space. Of course, um, you know, it is a free market, it goes very, very fast, um, but people need still need hand-holding and support. So creating as well uh, networks of support and the NFT space has been doing incredibly well in that regard. Uh, you know, artists helping each other, um, 
onboarding new people, um, teaching them how to use the Web3 tools that are improving in uh, UX, but are still not quite there. Everything is actually really, really fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'm here to tell you a little bit about curation, and I only have four minutes. So uh, essentially, curation and it allows for better discovery, for better experiences, and for uh, more education. What is curation? Well, you know, curation can be every everything from you know selection and creating lists, or it can also be uh, second order creation because when you're curating a set of assets, uh, a set of NFT a set of artworks or you know 12 pairs of sneakers it doesn't matter you are creating a whole collection so that means that you're creating as well so that's incredibly uh, important because you know, when you have these meta creations you are you know expanding the ecosystem beyond you know just like giving it more assets you're giving them meaningful connections as well mm. oh okay I was fast. Um, <laughs> so yeah, basically that's uh, that's it. Um, to summarize, um, you know, we need archiving, um, as I have been doing a little bit with writing reports uh, without being paid uh, for a very long time because I knew that the NFT space was going to get somewhere that was going to have a, a future, and we are right there right uh, right now. So um, that's actually really good. We have records of what was happening in 2018, in 2017, and obviously, you know, in the past three years. So that's incredibly important. Curation and improving discovery as well are very important. Uh, one thing that I actually forgot mentioning before, preservation of assets, which a lot of uh, platforms are working on, including uh, one of them, it's actually outside, it's called IPFS Piñata, and I really like it. That's also very important, and uh, by all means, creating networks of support and uh, onboarding new people teaching them about Web3, but also teaching them about the risks. And, uh, you know, just looking out for each other will help us achieve a long-term ecosystem that's actually uh, growing healthily and steadily. All right, uh, so that's, all my contacts are there. You can find me, you can ask me questions. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for having me here. <laughs>